Hey guys, welcome back to the Schmodown Respin presented by Cinetopical. I am Nate, here as always with Strange Wing. On to the news. The news for this week, we learned the Schmodown has some sexist assholes in it. Don't be a sexist asshole. Next, we have a controversial decision from the Kid versus Alonzo Dorado's match from this week. We had the Kid not being allowed to say the word lesbians because... Bibiani runs a strict household with rules. On those rules, you can't say lesbians are any form of lesbian. So, when the question came up, the kid challenged. Challenge did not go his way because Harloff did not believe that the kid was not allowed to say lesbians. He sure did after the match, though. Next, also has to do with the Brandon Meyer match. Uh, we learned that Scott Speedman is a really good basketball player from merely Mark Ellis. And we had that big three-match card this weekend that you should definitely check out. You got Who's the Boss versus... Versus... God damn it. Fucking... Producer. Who, who played Who's the Boss? Thank you. Who's the Boss played... Uh, uh, fucking... I blame my producer. Who's the Boss played Shazam? We had the Founding Fathers play against... Corruption for the team titles. We also had Corey Janju play against his internet during the whole match. So that's the news for this week. Hold on, one more piece of news. You made me say that stupid shit last week. I'm not saying that video Drew thinks Strange One is creepy again. I don't know who's writing that shit in there either. Well, you find out who it is and you get them fucking fired. And that's the news for this week. Very insightful stuff. Well, I appreciate that. You you had a very insightful interview with Big Time Ethan Irwin, didn't you? I did. We can't wait to show you that. Up next. Mr. Big Time Irwin, how you doing today? Welcome to the show. You know, you didn't do such big time things in your last match, unfortunately, after taking that loss to Dan. Now that Hollywood is basically shut down, have you been doing much studying lately? I've been studying a little bit. I've been studying your mom's tight ass. Well, that's just uncalled for. Look, you insulted me. I insulted you. I'm I'm big time Ethan Irwin. I'm a big Hollywood producer. What do you do? I I get paid to make YouTube videos. I could get paid to do YouTube videos too. I'm one of Christian Harlow's friends. All of his friends get paid for doing YouTube. I could do it whenever I wanted to and get paid. I got a really cool Coke now. Well, this is the better one. Look at that thing. It's impressive, ain't it? Get it just right. I want as big as your hood. He could grow a coke meal too if he wanted, you putz. Besides, he's a big time Hollywood producer. He probably already has one. You want to claim when you take the bumps off of it before the show started, the guy? Fucking Malacca. I don't have any coke nails. And if I did, I wouldn't disclose this on this shitty podcast. And FYI, you guys are fucking losers. Class it up a little bit. And maybe, just maybe, after I win the singles tournament, I'll come back and do the show again. Yeah, well, we look forward to having you back on, and we're not fucking losers. And now, Nathan with this week's matches. This week's matches started off with Lon, the delinquent Harris, versus Sabina Graves. Lon steals questions in round two like he stole Mad Dogs from the corner store the other day and ends up coming away with a knockout. Just like he knocked out the overweight cop that tried to arrest him for stealing said mad dogs. Mm, a violent type. Someone also known for impressive wins is Dan Merle. And this week we also saw the new Dan Merle, Eric Zipper, facing off against Paul Preston. Yeah. Nah, I'm just doing a stupid new show about some movie trivia. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have any on me. That's illegal. All right, I'll call you back when we get done. Good? Yeah. We'll edit it out, you know. Right. <laughs> Eric Zipper versus Paul Preston. Zipper picks up a huge win. Some may even say an upset and picks up some much needed points for the dungeon. For sure. The next play in match, we saw the spice get put on ice by Travis Bickle's illegitimate child, Vinny Mancuso. Hey, hey, Ryder boy. Good job on that one. <laughs> spice on ice. Ramirez shows everyone how important round one really can be and takes an unfortunate loss. Biggest shock of the week is Jim Vaveda actually seeming to know what the rules were during round one. 
However, Jim checks to multiple choice for every single question in round two after saying in every single question, I'm pretty sure I know the answer and then still going to multiple choice. You have to think that after all the criticism that he takes for not knowing the rules, not using those multiple choices to an advantage in the past, he's doing the same thing that a high school boy from the South does when he jacks up his uh, Chevy S10 way bigger than it needs to be. I don't know what a Chevy S10 is. He's overcompensating. I don't know what a Chevy S10 is, but I do know all the reactors when they found out he knew the rules for that one. Home alone face. <laughs> at the end of the it day. Was insane. I'm sorry. At the end of the day, Jader knows more questions than Jim does, and he takes the win. Finally, we have the kid versus Alonzo Duralde. They go back and forth the whole match, giving us a preview of De Niro's new film, War with Grandpa. You can't help but think of that when you look at the age difference there. The kid ultimately picks up the win, making Daddy Bibbs proud, and moves on to the next round. Thank you guys so much for watching the Schmodown Respin. Make sure you like, comment, share, go back up there, and subscribe.